Hi, this is Tim from Bike Friday, and I'm going to demonstrate here how to take a uh, family tandem out of the suitcase and, and put it together. So you see we have two cases here, and we've got two halves of the tandem in these cases, so I'm going to lay them down and get them out of here. So these cases have three latches, and it opens up. Unbuckle the straps here that are kind of holding everything down. And uh, we'll find a bunch of parts in here that are labeled in bags. This is the stem riser. We'll just start taking them out and getting them ready for assembly. So there's the stem riser and the stem. Brush protector flange here. We're gonna take off and get this front wheel out. And this is I got a saddle bag and then the seat post. It doesn't really matter whatever order you take these out, they're just gonna be in there however they got put in. Got a bag with pedals in it. All these bags should be labeled with what's inside of them. And then the big part is the main, in this case, the main frame and fork. This is the front half of the bike here, the front fork. Take this gray bag off the front fork. We got the handlebars here. And then we've got some uh, blue vinyl covers that we're protecting the crank arms. We're going to slide those off. And now, with the, the front fork, you see it sort of holds the bike up. This is kind of convenient because you can start putting pieces on. Stem riser can pop right on here onto the steer tube, and uh, it will go down there. It'll slot down. You feel it has a little bit of wiggle to it, but there's a stop, so you can tell you got it on there all the way. And then there's a tool kit in here that we can open up. It's got a little shoelace on it that's holding it shut. You can unfold this and find a, a multi-tool in here, and this will let you give you all the wrenches you need to uh, tighten all these Allen wrenches. All Allen bolts. Clamp that down. So we got the stem riser on here now, and uh, we can put the seat mast on there as well. And this is the captain's seat mast. It's typically taller than the, than the shorter one for the stoker. Although in some cases that may not be the case, depending on how what each rider's sizing specific custom sizing was. We have a seat post, captain seat post. But before we put that in, we actually need to attach the stoker handlebars to it. And we got these over here and in the front case. So these just slide on.
and the seat post can go into the seat mast. You gotta sort of eyeball things that line them up, make sure the seat's straight, and then the scope and the bar is straight before you really tighten it down. That looks pretty straight. And then the captain's handlebars can go up here on the stem. And uh, some of the stems will have split handlebars that you can just slide in both sides and tighten. This particular bike does not, so we we'll have to take this uh, face plate with all four bolts completely off the stem to let the handlebars go on. And when you're doing this, you want to keep an eye on the cables. They should look you know, pretty neat. If they're all twisted up, you might want to turn it around and try to get it as, as clean. You know, it should be, there shouldn't be really any twisting in these cables if it's set up correctly. But during packing, it's possible for the bars to get flipped or turned around, so you want to you know, undo that if it happens. Straighten it out. Because uh, if you do twist the cables around, um, they can actually adversely affect the braking and shifting performance. And also make it hard to steer the bike. So especially make sure that the cables don't get wrapped around behind the stem. They should all be out in front here. This particular bike is an electric assist bike, so it has some things that you may not have to worry about and if you have an electric assist or not. This one has an electric assist panel right here, so it makes it a little bit trickier to get the, uh, the faceplate on, but it's not too much trouble. So I'm just going around tightening these faceplate bolts one at a time, a little bit, you know, giving them a half turn at a time, going around and around. You don't want to try to tighten one all at once. You want to kind of have them all tightened down evenly at the same time, more or less. Okay, so this is standing up here, but since we're going to be not working with it, but it's probably good to lay it down so it doesn't fall over when you're not attending it. Put the front wheel up here. Um, this also gives us a chance to take this, uh, there's a crush protector in the, between the fork blades here, held on by a quick release, and we want to take this out. And then you can actually take this adjuster nut on the uh, quick release skewer that's, that's holding that together and take it, that nut completely off, that lets you slide this crush protector dowel completely off. And then this can go through the front hub skewer, hollow axle like it's supposed to. Put the spring back on there and tighten that down part way. And then we can put this wheel on. So we'll wait on that. Now we've got the back side of the bike here. And we can, here's a battery pack, which might be in the case if you have a battery for electric assist. We've got these main frame connecting front and back connecting tubes that connect the front and back of the bike together. And then here's the back, here's the back part of the bike. We'll 
take all the protective uh, plastic sheathing off of the frame and off of the crank arms. And then there's a yellow bag here with the uh, seat, the stoker seat post and saddle. And um, we already had the, uh, the stoker mast, which goes into the frame. Bring that out and tighten that down. And then the seat post can go into the mast. Tighten that down. And in this case, the rear wheel had been dropped out of the dropouts to get the fit the case a little nicer. So we can slide those back up into the dropouts. And then tighten the quick release. Your bike may not have that done. The other option could have been to deflate the tire, so in that case it may still be in the dropouts. And then we can just sort of lay the back end of the bike um, back about where it's going to be. And the next major component are these connecting tubes that connect the front and half, front and back halves of the tandems together. There's an upper tube and a lower tube. The lower tube has these cable stop uh, brazons on it, and um, these cable stops will be on the front of the lower tube. We'll lay that out like that. And the upper tube has the water bottle bosses on it, and if you've got a uh, battery pack, it'll have the battery uh, bracket system on it. And um, this will have a uh, overclamp bracket with three bolts on it that goes on the back side. So that helps you orient it. The front side will have an unpainted area with a scallop cut, and that goes into the front connector on the front part of the tube of the frame. That'll slide all the way in there until you feel a stop. And take your wrench. I seem to have lost. Here it is. And go ahead and tighten that down. And this lower tube has an unpainted, the section on the back is unpainted with a scalp cut. And uh, that can slide in as far as it will go until it stops. And then tighten that one down. Single bolt here that tightens it in. So now we've got two halves that are almost ready to go together. And these, these brackets here with the, with the three bolts on them will be used to connect these other two joints. So we can start with this upper one. We just sort of line the tubes up and then slide the bracket across so that it evenly kind of breaks, splits the two together and that connects them. But the bolts down on the bottom is how we want that. And the same thing up front, 
line up these tubes so they're parallel with each other. And then slide that bracket over. So it's about in the middle like that. Bolts are on the, on the downside. And so now we can see we've got a tandem frame. And so I'm not going to tighten these brackets yet because we're going to be able to adjust the frame a little bit using these to help us get the uh, chain tension we want on the timing chain. So, so I can, you can see what I'm doing better, I'm going to turn this around because there's some cables we've got to connect down on the other, on the bottom side. So down here we can see that there are, there are three cables that are in their holders coming from the back side of the frame. And these each have a cable connector. Each one of these cable connectors is distinct. It's either a different color or has a different marking on it. And so working from the top down, in this case, the top one is black with a white dot on it. So I look on the front side for a, a cable with a connector that is black with a white dot on it. It's this one here. And I'll put this one into the corresponding front cable holder, which is the top one, and then screw these connectors together. And that connects the cables from your handlebar controllers back to the rear brake and back to the, the shifters. And these just screw together, two turns. Snug. And then the next one down in the back is just straight black. So here's a plain black connector. So that would be the next slot. Is this one skips uh, one of the cable connectors, and the very bottom one has a silver connector. So here's a silver connector, so I'll put that cable on the very bottom cable holder on the front, and then hook these together. And this particular bike has an electric assist system, so this has a cable connects to a sensor in the back. So I'll hook this together. And these have a particular shape that makes them fit together a certain way. And actually in this case there's a, it looks like there's a back part because there's a zip tie here. It keeps it from dangling down so much. Okay, so the next thing we can do is put the front wheel on and we disconnect the brakes up here with this quick release mechanism so you can get the wheel on easy. Put the wheel up in the dropouts. Tighten the adjuster nut until the quick release has the correct tension on it when you shut the cam. It's a little too loose. That's too tight. Still too hard. That's just right. Then we'll reconnect the quick release. If you have trouble with the quick release, you can look at the cable. In this case, the cable came out of its stop up here on the brake lever. And I'll put it back in there, and now the quick release will put together nicely. That's the brake that's working. 
This bike has a kickstand, which is really nice. So we can use the kickstand now to hold the bike up. Uh, we do the finishing touch here. So the last major pieces we have left are the pedals and the timing chain. So we'll do the timing chain. It's in a blue bag, just like the pedals are. We'll say timing chain on it. And if it has any loops in it, you just sort of work them towards each other. It's not too hard to get those to straighten out. This one's about as bad as I ever see it. If you have two loops that are opposite, just work them towards each other and they'll cancel each other out. A couple loops. There's also a, uh, a, a quick link on there, and if it turns out to be too much trouble, you can just disconnect the chain and get those loops out that way. So that's another option. Okay. And then the timing rings are the same size. This particular bike has independent pedaling because of its electric assist, so you don't have to line up the crank arms. Otherwise, you can just eyeball the crank arms um, so that the most people want to ride with the uh, cranks in parallel, but you can do it uh, however you like. In this case, I think I better put it on the front first. one has a chain guard, so that's, if it has a chain guard, you want to put it on that side first. And we'll, it helps to roll the cranks forward when you're doing this, get the chain to feed on. Now the timing chain is on, and if you look at this, um, you'll see the timing chain is pretty loose right now. So we're going to have to pull the frame apart you know, under these over overclamp brackets to sort of stretch it out a little bit so the timing chain gets tight. And uh, we can do that, and because of the way these cable stops are arranged, we don't have to worry about it affecting our cable tensions. So. What I'm going to do is start off by tightening these, these three bolts on the top. And that'll keep, keep us stabilized up top. Before I do that too much, I'm going to look up and down the bike to make sure it's not twisted. Because when it's loose like this, the bike can get skewered. You can tighten it down. You want to make sure the two seat masts are parallel with each other. when looking from the back. That looks really good. push down on the bike, it'll stretch the cable, the chain tighter, because the top is locked, but the bottom starts to slip apart under the pressure. So with that pressure still on, I can go over here and tighten these bolts down. And that'll hurt this, that'll now stabilize the bottom connection.
I'm going kind of back and forth between these three bolts instead of trying to tighten one down all at once. It's better just to kind of go tighten each one a little bit at a time so they're all tight. At this point, if the chain needs to go tighter, you can go back to the top and loosen this again, and it will allow it to pull apart further while the bottom is still stabilized in its previous position. I loosen these three bolts, and just as I'm loosening these, I can actually see this spreading apart up top here. If I lift up on the bike, I can pull it apart even further. So with that opened up a bit, I'll tighten these back down. Since I want this timing chain just a little tighter than that, I'm going to repeat the previous step. Loosen those three lower bolts next. So these are tight on top now. Almost tight. And then I'll go back to these lower three ones. Loosen these. I just push down on that, and now, now this timing chain is just where I want it. And this only moves like, looks like an eighth of an inch, but that's all it takes. I'll tighten these again. At this point, all we have to do is put the, uh, the captain and stoker pedals on. And just remember when we put the pedals on that the left side of the bike has a left threaded pedal, which should have an L on the axle. And it threads in left handed, so you turn it counterclockwise to tighten it. And the right side is a right side of thread, so you turn it clockwise and keep take it. You can finger tighten those. In this case, this bike has electric assist, so I'm going to hook up, there's a wire from the front of the frame to this battery pack. So I'll hook that up. And then the battery pack itself, sitting right here. This just comes in from the bottom, wraps in place like that. There's a key on the other side, you turn the key and it will lock it in position so don't get to steal it. And in your tool bag, there's a little pedal wrench. You can use this to snug down the pedals. And the back pedals. Go on, the stoker pedals, make sure, once again, determine which is the left and right that has the L on it. Make sure you don't try to put them in the wrong crank arms. The left side one is left threaded, the right's right threaded again. And they should go in nice and easy until they're snug. Just make sure you don't cross thread them. And once you got them on there, just uh, in this case I'm going to use the wrench because my fingers don't quite reach in there. But just snug them down. They don't have to be real tight because you want to get them off later. And this little wrench isn't very long, so if they get too tight, you're going to have to get a bigger wrench. 
Just snug those down. And at this point, just collect all of your packing materials, make sure they're back in the case. Put your uh, tools back in the tool bag. Roll that up and tie it shut with the included shoelaces. Close all the cases now that we've got the bike out. See one last piece of packing material. And now you're ready to ride. You might have to do I left one, one last thing on here. Yeah, give the bike a look over and uh, check the you know check the brakes and you have to get on it and make sure the shifting is working. I, uh, I find it's good to give the brakes a good solid squeeze when you first hook them back up because often they'll be uh, um, they'll be some play that needs to be pulled out and uh, you're ready to ride.